this module, we will be discussing IPEX syndrome. The term IPEX is an acronym for immune dysregulation, polyendocrinopathy, enteropathy, and X-linked. IPEX is a rare, often fatal, X-linked immune dysregulatory disorder that typically presents during infancy with a triad of enteropathy, autoimmune endocrinopathy, and dermatitis. The defining feature of IPEX is immune dysregulation, resulting in autoimmune disease and allergic inflammation. IPEX is caused by mutations in the gene for the transcription factor FOXP3. Multiple different mutations have been identified. IPEX was previously designated as X-linked polyendocrinopathy immune dysfunction and diarrhea, or XPID, and X-linked autoimmunity and allergic dysregulation, or XLAAD. FOXP3 is a member of the Forkhead Box P, or FOXP, family of transcription factors, and is fundamental to the function of a subset of T lymphocytes, known as regulatory T cells, or Tregs. Tregs exhibit potent immune suppressive effects and thereby play a fundamental role in immune homeostasis, particularly with respect to tolerance. In addition to modulating autoimmune and allergic inflammation, Tregs also appear to be involved in transplantation tolerance. Penetrance of FOXP3 mutations is variable, and asymptomatic family members with mutations have been identified in some families. Patients who present with a similar phenotype, but without mutations in FOXP3, are described as IPEX-like. The classic presentation of IPEX is a male infant with the following triad of disorders. 1. Life-threatening chronic diarrhea due to an autoimmune enteropathy. 2. Autoimmune endocrinopathy, such as neonatal type 1 diabetes or thyroiditis. 3. Dermatitis, which is usually eczematous. Most affected children have failure to thrive. Additionally, Patients with IPEX may have immune-mediated cytopenias, other manifestations of autoimmunity, severe food allergies, nephritis, and exaggerated responses to infections. A common presentation of IPEX in infancy is chronic intractable diarrhea with failure to thrive. In addition to the characteristic autoimmune enteropathy, IPEX patients may have multiple gastrointestinal manifestations of autoimmune and or allergic inflammation. Manifestations of IPEX are due to immune dysregulation leading to autoimmune disease and allergic inflammation. Tissue from patients with enteropathies and endocrinopathies are characterized by lymphocytic infiltrates with or without associated autoantibodies. Early onset autoimmune endocrinopathies, typically diabetes and or thyroiditis, are hallmark features of IPEX. IPEX is a leading cause of permanent neonatal diabetes due to autoimmunity. The third component of the IPEX triad is dermatitis, which typically consists of an eczematous rash, such as atopic dermatitis, that ranges from mild to severe. About one-half of IPEX patients demonstrate evidence of immune-mediated cytopenias, and these patients frequently have associated autoantibodies. Coombs-positive hemolytic anemia, autoimmune thrombocytopenia, and autoimmune neutropenia are most common. Renal disease is reported in up to one-third of patients. Interstitial nephritis is the most frequent disorder and other findings range from mild hematuria and proteinuria to rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Renal disease may also be worsened and or induced by treatment with calcineurin inhibitors. Developmental delay is common and may be a sequela of chronic failure to thrive since infancy. Seizures are also reported in some patients 
usually associated with metabolic derangements resulting from severe diarrhea or diabetes. Patients with IPEX may suffer from acute respiratory distress syndrome. Infection-related pulmonary disease is well described in IPEX patients. Viral or other pneumonias are reported, and pneumocystis girovecii may follow the initiation of immune suppressive therapy. Now we'll cover the diagnosis of IPEX syndrome. IPEX should be considered in any male infant presenting with chronic intractable diarrhea with failure to thrive and or infantile onset of type 1 diabetes. The presence of dermatitis, autoimmune cytopenias, or thyroiditis further supports the diagnosis but is not required. The diagnosis is established by mutational analysis of the FOXP3 gene. Another signifier of IPEX is low or absent CD4 plus CD25 plus regulatory T cells. Here is a graph showing the findings on preliminary and advanced studies that are consistent with IPEX. A complete blood count with differential finds eosinophilia and cytopenias. Serum glucose and anti islet antibodies show refractory type 1 diabetes mellitus. Thyroid function tests with antithyroid antibodies show immune mediated thyroiditis. Immunoglobulin E is elevated. Immunoglobulin A may be elevated, but immunoglobulins M and G are usually normal. Anti-enterocyte antibodies may be present in an autoimmune enteropathy. T and B subsets and T cell proliferation are usually normal. When looking at FOXP3 gene sequencing, mutations establish the definitive diagnosis. An endoscopic biopsy will show villous atrophy with lymphocyte infiltration. A skin biopsy will also show lymphocytic infiltration. Treg quantitative and functional studies will show a Treg deficiency. Now we'll discuss management of IPEX, starting with acute management. Hospitalized IPEX patients should be placed in isolation because even minor infections can trigger significant flares of autoimmune and allergic inflammation. Blood products should be cytomegalovirus negative and irradiated. Early and aggressive therapy is critical and should be initiated by a team of pediatric subspecialists. Supportive care generally includes fluid resuscitation, total parenteral nutrition, or TPN, insulin, antimicrobials, albumin, thyroid hormone replacement, and blood products. Significant immune suppression may be required during acute medical events, including minor infections, to stabilize disease flares. Acute decompensations due to a disease flare generally warrants induction immune suppressive therapy for initial presentations or an increase from the patient's baseline maintenance therapy for previously diagnosed patients. A common presentation of IPEX in infancy is chronic intractable diarrhea with failure to thrive. These infants usually require periodic hospitalization, gut rest, and nutritional support with TPN, which can be life-saving interventions. A nutrition consult should be obtained to evaluate for malnutrition, as well as vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Immune suppression is generally required to achieve sufficient improvement in the diarrhea. Once the stooling pattern has normalized, feeds should be reintroduced slowly. Food antigens are well-described triggers of disease flares. Patients should receive either breast milk or extensively hydrolyzed formula. Now, let's discuss long-term management. Chronic management of patients with IPEX and IPEX-like syndromes typically includes a combination of intensive immune suppression and dietary modifications to avoid food allergens and optimize nutrition. 
Hematopoietic cell transplantation, or HCT, offers the potential cure but has substantial risk and may not be available for all candidates. Unfortunately, no single or combination therapy has been uniformly effective, and each has potentially devastating adverse effects. Immune suppression can be effective in ameliorating the symptoms of autoimmune and allergic disease, but it does not appear to halt disease progression. In addition, long-term use of these medications has been associated with significant adverse side effects and growth is often compromised. High-dose glucocorticoids, such as prednisone, are typically used for induction therapy at the time of presentation and for management of disease flares because of their rapid onset of action. Calcineurin inhibitors and sirolimus are the most commonly used steroid sparing agents in the treatment of IPEX. Other immune suppressive agents have been attempted with less efficacy. HCT is the only curative therapy available to IPEX patients. Genetic counseling should be offered to female family members of IPEX patients who may be carriers of the defective FOXP3 gene. Prenatal diagnosis can identify affected male fetuses. IPEX has also been linked to recurrent intrauterine fetal death.